known. And these are available under the needle felting tab kit. And up next is the wonderful Fairy Jamie. Woo! Yay! Hi everyone, I'm Jamie and I am here with our CX2 Winter White. It is the brightest white fiber that we have in the store. It's really great for snow. It's about as bright as snow. Um, and it's amazing for needle felting and everything that you may need for the holidays. Up next, Marie. Woo! 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 That's a sampling of our fairy crew. And as always, we love to share a couple of funnies with you. So here is our fairy in the field, Fairy Kayla. Hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here and happy Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone for joining us today. We have the cutest project planned today and I just can't wait. So I won't keep you guys waiting either. <laughs> So real quick question as always, why did the mouse stay inside? Why did the mouse stay inside? Because it was raining cats and dogs. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you everybody. I hope you have tons of fun today and we'll see you next time. Bye, Kayla. Thank you all so much for being here today. We are ready to share some little holiday fun with you. You know, it's fall. For many of us, it's still hot, but it's a great time to start thinking about Christmas decorating, Christmas gifts, and as always, Christmas crafting. And I know that uh, I've, we've already started ours. In fact, we did a Christmas or Christmas in July and we needle felted a snow globe earlier we needle felted a little owl which would make a great ornament and these little guys jingle and jangle just kind of got my funny bone <laughs> and we wanted to share them we have uh, filmed the steps of this so that we can present it to you as succinctly as possible and after today's show there will be a shortcut posted on youtube we started a new playlist of shortcuts we don't have a lot but these guys will be there so you can just get in on the details if you don't want to watch the whole thing for everyone with us today, thank you so much for being here and making Wednesday fun. We are going to front load today's session with a quick jump through our supplies, making the basic under armature of our mouse and getting us to the outer portions where we can get all of the details in place. So please join in the chat, chime in, and here we go. Hi friends, this is Marie at Living Felt. In this tutorial, we'll be needle felting Jingle and Jangle, our fun little mouse twins. The supplies are super easy, so grab a kit or shop the supplies a la carte in the link below. What you need is about a half ounce of core wool. We're using our CX2 in bright white, Maori wool in hollyhock, and a little pinch of something brown or tan. This is our MC1 clay. I'll be needle felting on our wow mat. We can also use a wowie topper. We're using four millimeter glass eyes, 100% wool felt. You'll need scissors, chenille stems, some permanent glue. I like tacky glue, a pencil perhaps, and all felting needles, a doll needle, something to cut your wire. And then we have a few little embellishments since ours will be a Christmas ornament. For the standard shapes and sizes, you can reference the pattern included with the kit or the PDF. For our armature, we're going to use a single chenille stem from the nose to the tail. We're going to fold the armature in half towards the middle, and you can use the size guide if you wish. The Maori wool will be both the nose and the tail, so pull off a narrow strip and draft it out so it gets a little bit thin. We're starting with the nose now, so we're going to make a tiny ball on the end. Just pull the fiber very taut through this little loop and twist it just on the very tip. Let it stick off the end a little bit and then fold it back over. Fold it over and then wrap over that to secure it down and just focus on the very, very tip. Needle felt this fiber using your fine needle. Just shallow pokes, don't hit the wire. Your goal is to get it all secured down and flat. Once you have the nose dialed in, you can use a slightly coarser needle to just really anchor the fiber onto the chenille stem at the base. You can go a little longer than you need because it will be underneath the core wool in a moment. 
Once the nose is finished, we're going to repeat with the tail, except it's longer. The tail is about 2.75 to 3 inches long. You can wrap a decent single layer of the Maori wool. Your goal is to keep it flat, not lumpy, and not twisted. So just take your time, hold the wool taut as you wrap it very tightly and then anchor it all down with your yellow felting needle or your finest felting needle. Once it's all secure, then you can kind of roll it in your hands and dry felt it, smooth it out just a little bit further. Okay, now we're going to cover this with our core wool. I encourage you to work with your core wool in long strips that you can control. If it's too bulky, it's going to go on bulky. We want it to go on very tight and uniform. Begin wrapping right beneath the nose. Anchor it well with very tight wraps. Notice I'll wrap a few and then I'll flip my chenille stem around so that I have complete control of it. So you'll wrap from the base of the nose cover what would be the tip of the tail and as we wrap we're going to put the bulk at the base and very little towards the nose. Wrap the entire strip building up that base and needle felt it down with your coarsest needles. I'm starting with the 32 triangle and then we'll move to the 36. Build up your mouse in multiple layers. So make your first long wrap of fiber, anchor that really well with your coarse needle, go back and begin your second layer by wrapping right at the base. Notice that we've pulled the tail out of the way. We already know the direction it's going to go and continue building your wool up with tight wraps and using your coarse felting needle to shape your under mouse to a cone shape, and you can use your diagram as a guide. If you angle your needle, you're less likely to hit the wire, so you want to avoid that to not bow, bend, or break your felting needle. Cover the very bottom of the mouse with a little bit of core wool. So make sure the tail is pointing to one direction and then you'll add a little patch of wool to the underneath side. Once you're happy with your under mouse, now we're going to shape it. You can use your coarse needle, 36 triangle, your 32 triangle, even your 38 star spiral to get a nice bend in the neck and a nice arch, so really shape and sculpt this. Build up a pad of wool to give your mouse a nice plump tummy. And needle felt that in place. then make sure that he has a nice crook in his neck and use your coarse felting needles to get that shape really firmly locked into place. Needle felt all of this core wool down so it's uniform and smooth and firm. Once our under mouse is firmly shaped, it's time to cover it with our outer coat. We're using CX2 Winter White for our outer coat. We only want to cover it with a solid single layer, so pull it off in narrow strips. We're going to use our fine felting needles. In this case, I'm using the 42 triangle. We begin wrapping at the nose a single layer. We'll needle felt that down, and then we'll build on additional wraps smoothing and flattening the fiber as we go until the entire mouse is covered with the outer coat that includes the body and the bottom of the mouse.
Okay, so that was a quick jump through our little process of getting our under mouse and the basics of our outer mouse all ready. And thanks for your patience while we jumped through those steps. You all have had some great questions and I just love this community so much because you're also answering each other and supporting each other. So thank you very much for that as well. That's just an amazing thing about our BFFs, which are all of you. Uh, I love your question. Susie Kohler asks, can we use MC1 maybe in one of the skin tones instead of this Maori Hollyhock? Yes, you absolutely can. I would choose peachy or even pale peach, but some of the tannish colors would work well as well. Somebody commented that that was a big nose, which I love. Yes, it was kind of comical. That's why that was kind of funny to give him like a big bulby nose. And someone else commented, I miss you said it, that it would be fun to decorate these in so many ways for different Different holidays and even Jordan said that when we were filming like it could be an Easter mouse and other kinds of mouse too <laughs> really fun uh, Meredith asks are we using Maori uh, instead of MC1 because of color choice or another reason um, so we've been using uh, the Maori just to kind of help you all get used to it as I said and you know get acquainted with it it does needle felt really well um, but as I mentioned pale peach or peachy and MC1 would be fantastic for this project also Oh, let's see. Maz asks, I wonder if you use a thin wire, uh, would it give it a skinnier tail? You certainly could. I was going for about this thick of a tail, something obvious, but you certainly could uh, make it thinner or even use a thinner wire, Maz. Whatever's your flavor when it comes to a project like this, whatever you like is the perfect thing to do. Uh, Linda asks, uh, what are the rules for selling items you make from our tutorials? And uh, she's having a holiday bazaar at church. We love helping empower you to sell at craft fairs, art fairs, fundraisers, donate, whatever. So whenever we, in any of our PDFs or any of our kits, uh, we of course have a copyright and that is really, um, and in it, it says you're welcome to sell whatever you make from our tutorials. So no worry there on uh, no copyright infringement for selling what you make. We love it. Uh, Robin asks, how about a red nose? That would be cute too. Yes, totally considered that, especially with his little antlers. I think that would be adorable. Okay, so now that we have our under mouse all ready, we're going to be working on uh, this next little section are the arms and the legs or hands, arms, and legs. Mine are rather skinny, um, but let's roll through these parts together and this one will be just a little bit quicker. Use the pattern provided in the kit or the PDF to cut out small circles for the ears. We will cut out little rectangles for the hands and save the scraps for eyelids. Set the ears aside. We will needle felt the hands first. Cut the 12 inch wire into four equal pieces. Use your awl to poke a tiny hole towards the end of the rectangle, about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. Insert the chenille stem into the hole and fold it over tightly. Make four of these for each mouse. Align your chenille stem with the drawing such that the top of the fold is just above the squiggle line indicating where the hand begins. We're going to cut the felt a little bit shorter and a little more narrow. On all hands slash feet, Wrap the felt and the very tip of the chenille stem in the hollyhock fiber, just a single or double layer and needle felt it flat. Wrap each arm with a thin layer of the white fiber and needle felt it smooth. Leave the very end of the wire exposed.
To give the hands a little more character, we are going to cut fingers and needle felt some dimension into them. Attach the arms and legs to the outside of your mouse so that they wrap around and hug its fat little tummy. We needle felt it right onto the body in shape. We needle felt by anchoring at the shoulder joint or the hip joint. Use your coarse needle and don't worry about needle marks. Then make a small tuft of fiber to lay over the top and create a wider top arm or top leg and smooth that down with your fine felting needles. There we go. That is a fun little way and an easy way to make arms and legs on your little beings, especially if they don't have to hold much. Now on that little clip, I didn't show you, but I ended up cutting down the chenille stem just to make it a little bit shorter, but I also bend the very tip, the pokey bit of the wire. I always bend it back towards the body. If you want, you could even poke a little hole in the body and put the arm in there. You could even secure it with glue if you want before you patch it over with wool. Of course, you could make the top part of your arms and legs a little more conical and a little more um, fluffy and full before you need them felt them onto your being and we've done that in past tutorials as well I just wanted kind of a skinny little mouse great question y'all too so Carol asked what if you want a bigger mouse what wire would you use if especially if you want the arms to hold on to something if you want them to grip you might try even our 18 gauge wire which is much more coarse but we do have other wires in between that are not covered with something like a cloth or paper and with those you might add some floral tape which we carry as well just to add a little grippy sticky onto it so we do have 12 gauge and 14 gauge wire that is aluminum we use those in a lot of our sculptures and I think a couple of tutorials ago we shared all of the wires that we have you can find that in the Wooly Wednesday playlist just a few back and maybe gauge what different wires are more suitable for the size and shape of creature that you're making uh, Tina asks about the chenille stems. Are they special? I don't know if they're special, but I will tell you uh, two things about the chenille stems. We have a great pack that's in these assorted sort of natural colors, dark to light, so black, dark brown, medium brown, all the way to white. Um, and then we're going to be offering some more that I just consider skin tones or neutrals, uh, packs or assortments and then we have a holiday assortment coming out as well we do work directly with the factory so I have sourced these myself I don't know if they're better than others but I know that I really like working with them so um, so I saw, saw someone else comment that ours are a little fluffier than most I'm not sure but I really do like them a lot Okay, and then Cindy says, which needle did we use on the hand? Great question, Cindy. We used two different needles to needle felt the hands. The first one was the 42 triangle where we were tacking all the fiber down and uh, making it very nice and flush. But then when I cut the fingers, I did go in there with a 38 star spiral just to really accent and compress that wool um, where we cut those fingers. And that made a little bit bigger of an indent. Chloe says, whenever I make anything mouse shaped, my cat will consider it a toy. Would it be bad idea uh, to make a needle felted mouse toy, not to mention the smell he likes it? So you could absolutely make toys for your cat to play with. I would obviously skip the armature and all the other stuff that's coming out of it so they don't get a hold of it, but you might even could put a little bell or something inside that jingles and makes noise. Um, you could felt over the little squeakers like my dog always rips the squeakers out of toys and when my other dogs were little I would save them and I would make them like um, washing machine dryer balls we call them dryer balls now but we just made balls in the washing machine back then and uh, you can make critter toys out of those too so absolutely something for them to play with and bounce around they love it I'm sure stuff Great a little question. bit of catnip in there oh yeah <laughs> For sure. Okay, now it's time to make our ears and our eyes. We have more guides for you on that and it's a super easy process. To make the ears, 
Cover each circle on one side with a hollyhock. And the other side with the CX2 bright white, leaving a small tail off of the white to attach to the head of your mouse. Play with the position of your ears, making sure to give them a good fold in so that they curl. So find the position and then needle felt them into place. Needle felt the ears firmly to the head and then smooth over any joints with your fine felting needles or a little patch of white if you need to cover it. For this little mouse, I like the eyes sitting almost right on top of the head in between the ears. So choose your position and then create small holes for the eye wire. Cut your eyes so the wire is long enough to insert in the head and anchor firmly. And get the position just right. Trim tiny strips from your wool felt and cover the back half with white wool to create cute little eyelids. Wrap the little eyelids you made around the eyes and needle felt them firmly into the top of the head. Use a medium to medium coarse felting needle for the very corners where the felt meets the bottom sides of the eye. And then you can use a fine needle to needle felt the white wool in place to the top of the head. I like to use just a little touch of brown to give my mouse a smile. Roll the wool between your fingers, just a tiny pinch to make like a long strip. Anchor it at a peak underneath the nose and then draw each side up to a little smile. Of course, your mouth can be any shape you like. So really, really easy to do. You see, I kind of rushed through those eyes a little bit, but once you, I like to get my placement first, and then after you know that your eyes are in the exact place where you want them, then just dip the little tips of the wire into some permanent glue and put them back in, totally fine. The eyelids are a little bit fiddly, uh, but once you, as long as you leave a little tapered wool off the back, then that will anchor them down as well. And the ears are so fun to play with, aren't they? You can have them in so many different positions um, and you'll get a different look like this is kind of a diminutive look can we see this one overhead Jordan so this would be like kind of like a little diminutive look with his little his little ears down or all the way up and bright and fun so you can definitely play with how you want his little ears to look such a cute little thing all right our very last thing is to give our guy his antler headdress and finish him off Use the full length of the brown chenille stem to form the antlers. Mine are folded in about two and a half to three inches to form the lower antler and the part that will mount to the head. Then bend the second antler a little bit shorter. Each one ends up being about an inch and about a three quarters inch. Repeat on the opposite side. Use the short tail end to wrap around the middle of the antlers and secure the wires in place. If your mouse is going to be a hanging ornament, it's ideal to insert the cord before the antlers. Thread a long doll needle with your hanging cord. Run the needle up through the base of the mouse, out through the top of the head behind the eyes. Re-enter the body and bring it back out the base. Leave enough of the, at the top to hang it. Tie a knot. Cut off the excess and then pull it taut within the mouse. Cover the knot with a tiny patch of wool and needle felt it firmly. 
Use the lower tail of the chenille stem to anchor the necktie so your mouse can wear his little antler hat. Secure the antlers on the head by tying the strings around the back of the neck and tie it firmly underneath the chin. You can also secure the antlers to the top of the head with glue if desired. For ours, we secured it in place with a little patch of wool directly over the strings and behind the antlers. Here's a last look at our cute little mouse. We gave ours adornments of little bottle brush wreaths because they just stick right onto their paw pads and they just look adorable. What cute ornaments they would make, gift toppers or even just little gifts for a friend. They're quirky, cute, and kind of comedic. I hope you guys had fun and I can't wait to see which ones you make or what your mice look like. So fun, right? And super easy. I love reading y'all's comments while that's going on. I see lots of people are going to be making mice this weekend. and I just can't wait to see what all the characters are that y'all come up with. Super, super fun. So Kim Pope asked, what size were the eyes? We used our four millimeter glass eyes in yellow for this little guy. I just, somehow the yellow was just the perfect color for him. I don't know why, because he's such a kook, really. Linda says he needs whiskers. And then Kim Pope says, can you use horse hair? And uh, yeah, so as a matter of fact, I have that all queued up here. We're gonna show you how to put whiskers on and we didn't include it in the kit. It was more an afterthought. I will show you that in just a moment. Let me answer a couple questions. Janine says, um, how firmly is he felted? Well felted, really firm. I have, I'll just do a little squish here for you. I mean, I'm squish, see the whites of my fingers. He's not distorting at all. So I made him really nice and firm and that's the point. Uh, so the, you can't, I am really squishing him. And as you can tell by my, by my finger beds and he's holding up. So really nice, nice firm. Great question on that. Laura says it looks pretty quick. How long does it take? I have no idea because <laughs> I'm always making steps while I'm making the thing and I'm never in a rush. So I'm the biggest slow poker when it comes to needle felting. Anyway, I really take my time. I have no idea, Laura. Um, that Judy says are the antlers a total of three inches in chenille. Um, no, Judy, we used a whole 12 inch chenille stem to make the antlers and I didn't cut any of it off. So I just used all of it to wrap around itself and hang on to the, the string as well. Great question. And then, okay, so here come the whiskers. We set this up to show you how you could use horse hair for the whiskers. We carry horse hair in the shop. You get a whole, you know, big bag of it. This is an example of the light mix. So it has light in it, but it also has dark in it. And then we have like some medium brown mixes as well. This is just a tiny pinch from the pack. Horse hair is really nice and long, so it's nice to work with. And I've chosen a dark, uh, hair here so that we can see him on the mouse and I'm going to show you one way that you might insert whiskers on your little guy and you can see that we have some in here right now. Thank you all for the, the commentary and all the notes and we felt the same way that we thought at least whiskers would be a fun option. So you can start the whisker on the side where you want them coming out. And I have threaded the horse hair onto a sewing needle. Give yourself enough uh, lead that you can hang on to it. And then just go right into the muzzle and out the other side. Then we're going to come all the way through and hang on to this here where you want it to stay and go back in here and back out the other side. Now this is going to give you a, a pretty good anchor that way, but you can also do it again to firmly anchor it in place. So just go back in and come out again. And now you can trim these two whiskers to the length you want. Straighten these guys out. 
And Jordan was saying last week, I think, or when we did the mouse, that whiskers, I don't know what it was, that whiskers might be as long as the, the critter's ears. So you can have one, one longish and one shorter. But that's what I would do, go in and out. And if you want, you can put a little glue, you know, through this side here. We just went back in and covered it up with a little bit of white wool. But that's one way to do it, is to go in and out of the muzzle. Coat, great. Uh, did, uh, let's see, great questions. Let's hear, why don't you use the whiskers from the tubes? Uh, Marjo asked, why don't we use the whiskers from the tubes? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we introduced these little artificial whiskers. So the horse hair is natural. The artificial whiskers, we showed how to do on what project, Jordan? What was it we pulled out the whiskers for? I don't know what we pulled them out for, but uh, we did look at using these and we had looked at using them just a couple of weeks ago. So um, it's your choice. We have artificial whiskers in white or black, or you can get the horse hair. The horse hair you can sew back you know, through the muzzle a couple of times. These little artificial whiskers, you would insert it all the way through the muzzle, um, cut it to the length you want it once it's embedded, and then put a little dab of glue on the end and pull it back in. That would help hold it. So good question, thank you. Suzanne asked, do we sell the, the little wreaths? We don't sell them a la carte, uh, Susan, but uh, Suzanne, but they will be in the kit. We might throw them into a couple of uh, kits this year, but we don't sell them all by themselves. Um, Carol, did you use a thicker thread for the hanger? Carol, thank you. I use a little silver elastic on these guys for the hanger. And it doesn't have to have elastic in it, but that is what we used um, to hang this guy. Just a little more of a delicate since his necktie was so big and obvious. And Tammy says, I use anything I have on hand for hanging or details or anything goes that you like. Agree? <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. You can decorate these guys with so, give them so many jobs to do. That's how I like to think of it. They need a job to do. They want something to decorate, something to keep them busy. One of them could have a cookie. <laughs> you know, very good. Uh, Susan Cunningham says, I like that the antlers are just tied on so he can wear different hats throughout the year. I agree. I think we should bring the mice back for a couple of more seasons and see what kind of antics they get up to in the year. Um, uh, if you, we do have a kit for these little guys if you're interested. Of course, if you follow the link in the description, you'll get to the whole supplies page and the video will be there. I think we'll also uh, link, put the shortcut video on that page. The shortcut video will be on the kit page. And then uh, we have a PDF as well. If you wanna just get that and get the little patterns and stuff, you can get that as well. And maybe we'll put the, the shortcut video on that page too. So you can just watch it real quick. Uh, any final questions on that? No questions, Jordan says. I think we've Good. answered them all. Yeah, thank you all so much. Really fun project. We want to help you kind of power up your holidays and get your crafting going for that. Uh, Vicki says, I would put a pumpkin in his hand. And Laura Buckles says, this Christmas, you get a mouse and you get a mouse and you get a mouse. That's going down as my favorite comment from today's show, <laughs> Laura. Oh, thank you all so much for playing with us. Listen, if you've been uh, joining along, thank you so much for being here. We are going to draw a couple of names from our hat right now and give away some prizes. Ooh. And uh, yeah, thanks <laughs> thanks y'all for playing. You draw first, Jordan. Okay. Some people mentioned having them on the grandfather clock oh, or on the fire mantle. Cute, 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 cute. <laughs> Okay, so today we are going to give away two Jingle and Jangle kits so you can make your very own. And who do you have, Jordan? I have Maz Spigot. Very nice. And I have Carol McDaniel. Yay! Congratulations, y'all. <laughs> and thank you so much for felting with us. We hope you leave a comment down below. Let us know your favorite takeaway and watch for the shortcut. We appreciate you being here with us. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. I want to tell you, come back next week. Sorry for all of you who are still watching. Come back next week because Natasha Smart is coming. I think we told you this last week. She's coming all the way from the UK. She is known for wet felting over our Bertha balls. And she's coming all the way from the UK to film a class for feltingtutorials.com. You're going to want to meet her. She's just fantastic. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.